Hello viewers, welcome to the Chess YouTube channel. Today I am going to show you an interesting chess opening, the Evans Gambit. White plays this gambit to take huge lead in development. I will also cover an Evans Gambit game played between Alexander Grishuk and the world champion Magnus Carlsen. So stay tuned till the end. White begins with e4, black plays e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5. White attacks the bishop. This opening is called the Evans Gambit. Black is forced to take the pawn or to retrieve the bishop. Bishop to b6 is the Evans Gambit declined variation. And if bishop takes the pawn, it's an Evans gambit accepted. c3 attacks the bishop. Now the bishop is again attacked by the pawn. Bishop d6 is the stoneware defense. Bishop e7 is the Lasker's defense. And bishop a5 is the main line. I will cover every variation one by one. Bishop b6 is the Evans gambit declined variation. This is the safest approach because if bishop takes the pawn, white could attack the bishop again. So in this position, white's main idea is to play a4 and if black is not careful and plays h6, then white would simply lock the bishop. In this position, the move that black should play is a6. The purpose of this move is to create a space for bishop. But here white has an interesting plan. Knight c3, h6, knight d5 attacks the bishop. And now if black tries to exchange the knight, white takes the bishop and ruins the black's pawn structure. In this position, white can also play b5. And when the knight retreats, white can simply take the pawn. So in this position, black should play knight f6. This move prevents the knight d5 and also attacks the e4 pawn. And now we will take a look at some accepted variations. Black takes the pawn, c3 attacks the bishop again. Now bishop has to move. Bishop d6 is the stoneware defense. The idea behind this move is to reinforce the e5 pawn. White strikes in the center. Black plays knight f6 and proceed to castle. In this position white can also play queen b3. White attacks the f7 pawn as it is only defended by the king. So in this position the best move for black is knight a5 attacking the bishop and also force it to move from this diagonal. Bishop e7 is the last cross defense. This is an interesting variation and many strong players use it in their games. White's idea is to strike in the center. Black plays at 6 Here white can also advance his pawn. In this position, white has a serious threat. Queen b3 attacks the d7 pawn. And black cannot save it now. And in this position, black should play knight a5, attacking the bishop and force it to move. Bishop a5 is the main line. The idea is to pin the c3 pawn. White's main idea is to push the pawn again. If e takes d4, in this position, knight shouldn't recapture the pawn because it would ruin the pawn structure. Instead, white should castle first. And if black does nothing and plays h6, white can recapture the pawn. And if black takes the pawn, white can play this strong move and attacks the f7 pawn. Queen defends, now knight can recapture the pawn. Doing it this way gives white a huge development advantage. In this position, the main reply for black is d6. 
d5 attacks the knight and now knight has to move. Now have a look at Magnus Carlsen and Alexander Grishuk game. This is the bullet game played in 2017 at chess.com. In this game, Alexander Grishuk had white pieces and Magnus Carlsen was playing with the black pieces. Grishuk played the Evans Gambit. Magnus declined the gambit and Grishuk went for the main line. Magnus already made a slight inaccuracy in the opening. b5 attacks the knight. Magnus offered a trade of knights. Grishuk declined the trade. Magnus reinforced the center. Grishuk centralized his knight. Bishop g4. Magnus pinned the knight. c3 attacks the knight. Knight takes f3 check. G takes f3, bishop h5, rook g1, knight e7. Again, Magnus went for the trade. Knight takes b6, c takes b6, rook takes g7, d5 attacks the bishop, e takes d5, knight f5 attacks the rook, rook to g1, queen h4 attacks the bishop, queen e2 supports the bishop, queen takes h2. Attacking the rook, rook g5 attacks the knight. Queen h1 check, queen blocks, queen takes f3, bishop e2 attacks the queen, queen takes e2, queen takes e2, bishop takes e2, king takes e2, knight d6, rook takes e5 check, king d7, bishop a3, rook a2 e8, offering a trade of rooks. Rook takes e8, rook takes e8, check. King d3, knight e4, f3 attacks the knight, knight f2 check, king d4, Magnus pushed his passed pawn. Rook g1, rook e2, d3, h4, rook g7, king e8 defends the pawn, rook g8 check, King b7, rook f8, h3, rook takes f7 check, king e8, rook f8 check, king d7, rook f7 check, king e8, rook h7 stopping the passed pawn, rook d2 attacks the pawn, king e3 attacks the rook, so rook a2 attacks the bishop, bishop d6, knight d1 check, King d4, rook takes a4 check, c3 blocks the check, rook a2, Magnus created another pass pawn, bishop c7, a4, d6, and in this position Magnus Carlsen resigned the game, because now it's forced mate in 4. Let me explain you how. Rook e2, d7 check, king f8 only legal move d8 promotes to a queen check, rook blocks, queen f6 check, king g8 only legal move and queen g7 is a checkmate. If you enjoyed the video, like it, share it and don't forget to subscribe the channel. I have an interesting chess puzzle for you all. Find the best continuation for white and share your answer in the comment section below.